Well, in this session, we're gonna be talking about one of the most fundamental principles in a disciple-making process, the person of peace. It comes from Luke chapter 10, where Jesus sent out the 72, and he said to go into the towns and villages where he was intending to go after them. And one of the things that they were to do as they went into those communities was to look for that person of peace, to look for that person who was open to receiving the messenger and the message that they bring. And we find that the person of peace is someone who has a spiritual openness. They have a, a spiritual sensitivity. And they're hospitable. They'll invite you into their relational network or community. And they're a person who's chosen by God to open up their relational network to the gospel. And so when we enter into a mission field, we look, first of all, for the person of peace in that community. And then we share the gospel with them so that they can share the gospel with the community. Now, there's a few characteristics of a person of peace. First, they're open to the messenger. They're hospitable. They invite you in. Second, the person of peace is open to the message. There's someone with a, a spiritual openness. They have a spiritual sensitivity. And so when you invite them to discover more about God and read the Bible with you, they're actually willing to do it and they have questions about it. And then the, the person of peace receives the message of the gospel. They discover that the gospel is for them and they want to be discipled. And so when we find the person of peace, we spend time with that person. We disciple them over a period of time. Sometimes it might take three months, six months, or even a year or, or more. It, it takes that time to disciple that person of peace because we're preparing them to be the insider who's going to reach their entire relational network with the gospel. And, and that's the final characteristic of the person of peace. They open their community or, or their relational network to the gospel as they share the gospel with the people that they know. So how do you discover the person of peace? Well, it always starts with prayer. A good place that I've found to start is with the 1002 prayer. Set your alarm for 1002 every day and then pause and pray that the Lord of the harvest will raise up harvest workers for his harvest field and then make yourself available in your community. Talk to people, listen to them, and they'll discover that you're a spiritual person. And often, you don't have to find the person of peace. The person of peace finds you because the person of peace is seeking spiritual things. They're looking and questioning about God. And then when you identify that person of peace, you start to spend time with them. You start to disciple them. You invite them to discover God with you. You invite them to read the Bible with you so that when they begin to develop a group of people who are interested in discovering who God is too, they can invite them into a discovery Bible study. And so what happens is this process that you invited them, that's the process that they're going to use to help that community of people to really discover who God is. And so it's built into the DNA right from the start. And then as they become believers, they can really make a transformational gospel impact in their community. And so the person of peace concept is really the idea of taking the person that God has already chosen to be the insider in a relational network or community, finding that person, discipling them, and then through them reaching the entire community with the gospel. The person of peace is the relational gateway. However, the aspect of a, a person of peace being the insider into a community and, and one who opens up that community to the gospel, it gets a little bit tricky when we're thinking about our own network of relationships. And so if you're engaging with your community and you're having spiritual conversations, but you're struggling to find the person of peace, the chances are that you are the person of peace. Now, I was in a discipleship training, and one of the guys in my group, Daniel, he was engaging in his community and having some awesome spiritual conversations with his neighbors. He'd been doing it for a few years, but he felt like he was stuck because he couldn't find the person of peace. And I was sitting there thinking, man, I know how he feels. I've been there. And then another guy in the group looked at him and said, Daniel, dude, you are the person of peace. Now, out of the whole training, that was the most impactful moment. You see, even though with technology and social media, we're more connected than we've ever been as a society, 
we're also more isolated and alone than ever before. People are longing for real connections, but it's becoming less and less natural to form those relationships. And this might be especially true if you identify your neighborhood as your place of mission. In a close the garage door when you get home culture, natural relational connectors in places like suburban neighborhoods are rare. And so one of the best things that an aspiring everyday missionary can do is to see themselves as the relational connector, to see themselves as the person of peace and start inviting neighbors over for dinner or creating space for real connections to form. If for my neighborhood, we throw parties where we can get to know our neighbors and our neighbors can get to know each other. And we found that we had to create relational space because it didn't exist. And so when you're engaging in your own relational networker community, you yourself are becoming the networker. You are the person of peace. And in a relationally disconnected society, sometimes we have to create a relational network before the gospel can spread naturally through it. And so whether you find a person of peace or you are the person of peace, the concept is the same. God uses the person of peace to make gospel impacts and reach entire networks of relationships.